Well, ladies and gents, it is a solemn day, a day in which we mourn the loss of a game that basically nobody played. <laughs> That's right, we're talking about Marvel's Avengers. If you're not aware, Marvel's Avengers is being delisted on September 30th of 2023, in case you're watching this in the future. And basically what that means is that you're not going to be able to buy it, even if you want to on digital storefronts. You could still theoretically find like a physical version of it and buy it in like a Best Buy or Target or Walmart or something. But as for like Steam, PlayStation Store, Xbox Store, it's just gonna be gone. As a result, it's on a very steep discount all the way down to $4, 90% off. What a steal until it's delisted, at which point, again, you just won't be able to get it. Now, to be fair, the version of the game that's on sale on a deep, deep discount is the definitive edition, meaning you get all of the characters that they added as DLC or expansion characters over the course of the last couple of years since it came out. That's right, Marvel fans, for only $3.99 on Steam, you can play as some of your favorite characters from the Avengers, including the Grimacing Gunman, Bowman Brandon Bowman, the Red Scare, The Amazing A, The Pumaman, The Mean Green Machine, Lightning Bolt Shirt Girl, Thor, and Thor again. Also these two. Someone had better call the police because this is absolutely stealing for only $3.99 on Steam. For only $3.99, you can play as all of the best Marvel characters that are not Spider-Man. Now, I'm not telling you to go buy this for four bucks because the game is pretty lackluster, but in this video, I thought we would go. I will play a little bit of it for you so you can see just what it's like, and you can make up your mind yourself if you think it's worth $4 at this point. I originally played on PlayStation, so this Steam version is brand new to me, so I don't have any save files, and we're looking at it fresh, so. We're going in uh, uh, raw, I I think is the term. I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, and here we go. We're right into it. Now, one thing I will say is that I don't think this game is bad looking. I think graphically, it's actually pretty good. It's coming from Eidos Montreal. There are no slackers in the graphics department. However, where this game really struggled was with the narrative and with long-term support. They did get DLC updates. They did get new characters. They got a bunch of stuff like that, but it just wasn't enough for people to feel like it was worth playing for months and months and even years and years on end because this game was crafted from the very conceptualization phase as a live service game, which at this point is just anathema to gamers. Like if you hear live service, you don't want anything to do with that game. Look at that little fella, he's adorable. So it was an interesting experiment. However, Square Enix's own executives have said that it was a very disappointing game in terms of its financial performance, which is why it's being delisted. And I've seen speculation going back and forth as to why they might be delisting it, but effectively, because it's a licensed game and you're talking about Marvel superheroes, they have to make sometimes either royalty payments or annual payments or whatever they might negotiate on each of these characters that they've licensed. And they have to make those payments to Disney in this case as the owners of the IP regularly. And if the game itself isn't profitable, they're just not going to renew those licenses because there's no reason for them to renew those licenses. It's just losing money. And that's why you're seeing the game delisted at this point so that they can get out of paying those royalties in the future. New hero available, Winter Soldier. I can dismiss that. Avengers Initiative. It takes place after the events of the campaign. Okay, so this is the long-term hey, stuff. Shapes. And again, it's not a bad looking game. Oh, this is interesting. So they also rebalanced how a lot of the core game mechanics work because there were complaints when the game launched that it was just really toxic. And again, very live service-y, if that's a term. You know what? We're making it a term, live service-y. We're doing it. I'm gonna make t-shirts. <laughs> So this was interesting. They have all sorts of different customizable takedowns that you can add and change. And that's not a bad idea for 
a game like this being able to tweak your takedowns i kind of like that it would be a cool addition in something like the arkham games if you could customize each of your takedowns as you are engaging in combat i think that's a cool idea so that's novel i'm okay with that you can see there's also lots of different gear options for customizing that this is a brand new save so we don't have any but as you play you'll gain higher power level items that can tweak your character so they become more powerful as you take on more missions in addition we can customize outfits specifically which are just different skins of characters and i mean there's some really cool ones in here i think it, pretty much all of them are equipped with this definitive edition you can buy because again they're kind of giving up on the game so whatever skin you want you can just get and play with that one which I think is super cool as terrible as it is to see a game just totally abandoned and thrown into the dumpster of history there is one saving grace and that is that all of the like cosmetics that they used to charge for is now included and you can just get it for pennies on the dollar it's like the good old version of batman arkham city if you remember this where like you can buy it now for 20 bucks and it comes with all of the dlc which has like harlequin's revenge it has all of these different skins tied to them which previously like each of these were really expensive but now they're all just tied into one you know it's it's the one perk of either really old games or games that are dying but we'll use this skin we'll go with that i think that's a good that's a good one very unique i love it oh hello doggo hello i will pet you now who's smarter than they're human you are but you know what now that we have this guy selected how do we actually play the game because right now we're just in the menus well how we do it is we pull up this menu we can go over to objectives we have the campaign taking aim future imperfect war for wakanda virtually unstoppable and shield substation zero and each of these are their own mission chains that are decent most of these were expansions and dlc that were meant to again fulfill the vision of a live service game that's constantly being updated pulling players back in but the campaign is where they got started and frankly is where the game is probably at its best and this is something i will give them credit for i do think for four dollars the campaign the is probably worth it like at, at four dollars i think there's four dollars worth of fun frankly i mean i know that it's easy to just be like no game sucks abandon it ignore it but for four dollars if we're not being like facetious and being pricks i think four bucks is probably fair one thing i will say though and i said this when we tried the game like however many six months ago or something when they dropped the wakanda dlc the fov is killing me if it was a little bit wider i'd be good but as far as i can tell in the settings there isn't actually a way of changing the fov and it just makes it really really tough when you're sitting decently close to your screen i'll tell you what yeah i'm not seeing any settings to change it if it is in the menus and somebody corrects me i'll pin the comment and everything in the description box below but it's just like killing me to be fair i am hypersensitive to this kind of thing i can't play like doom for example even though i love the game in the short spurts i can play it if i play it for more than like 10 minutes i get super motion sick i don't know what it is something's wrong with me but in this case this fov also like really just starts to mess with my brain but you know it doesn't mess with my brain apex gaming pcs apex gaming pcs are my pc building partner i use an apex gaming pc every single day while I'm working down here, all of the footage, everything you've seen recorded on this channel, like in the last year, has all been on this supercomputer. And if you want a super awesome PC, but you don't want to get into PC building, it's just too much or you don't have time, check out Apex Gaming PCs. When you buy a PC from Apex Gaming, not only can you fully customize it either based off of one of these templates that we've created for you or with very specific specifications. If you want to swap out like GPU or different RAM sticks, you can do all of that in this builder. And they'll also give you estimates on performance of what you can expect with that setup on a given game. Not to mention that the actual PC is put together by experienced PC builders where this is all they do. They specialize just in this. They'll cable manage it for you. They'll make it look awesome they'll make sure everything's installed properly and running before they ship it to you it's seamless check them out at the link in the description box below and make sure to use my creator code to get a discount at checkout in addition to supporting me again this isn't one of those cases where like a youtuber is recommending something they've never touched or used before like i use an apex gaming pc every single day of my life <laughs> like i would know how good they are and they are very very good so much so that i use it 
every single day of my life. So again, check them out at the link in the description box below and use my creator code. And I mean, just look at what it's able to power. This, this game right here, love it. Again, the lighting, this is a good looking game. I know like some of the faces and hair can be a little iffy, but man, I, I think it gets probably more hate than it deserves. I think this is a good looking game. Okay, now it's gonna have us do a little tutorial sequence. Let's do that. And then we'll be able to actually get into it, hopefully. The harm room, love it. Okay, this is just gonna be a super basic tutorial. So I'm just gonna knock it out and then I'll be back in like 10 minutes or however long it takes. Oh, that's weird flickering, that's weird. Okay, so I just finished the tutorial section. Now we have access to this table where we can select different heroes depending on who we wanna play as. Each of these will have their own kind of leveling system, different move sets, play styles, all of that. So there frankly are a lot of different ways to play and you can customize it, tweak it, build your own version of them pretty comfortably, which is super cool. And you can even set like companion preferences while matchmaking if you prefer to play with certain types of characters over others, which I mean, imagine if that was in a lot of other games where you could select like when playing Apex Legends or something, you could say, oh, I prefer to play with a Valkyrie and a Jibby. And then they just try to match you up with other players doing that kind of thing. That would be crazy. But uh, in this case, they allow you to select that. I don't think matchmaking is going to be that robust that you'll find exactly what you're looking for. But still, that's a really novel feature that I don't think I've seen in other live service games. So that's kind of cool. But now you can see we're playing as Bruce Banner. If we want to swap over and let's just say start playing as Thor, we can select him and then boop, we're right over to Thor. So you can really tweak it exactly how you want. But OK, let's talk to Nick Fury, see what he's got for us. To be back. Sure does. Okay, and if we pull up missions now, you can see it's really filled out. Not only do we have individual trainings for each of the heroes, because of course they have their own special moves and different abilities and things, but we can also go on the iconic Avengers mission chain, which is specific to the Avengers, or the strongest Avenger. All of these have different like XP or crafting item bonuses and things. And here, like there's each individual missions for each of the characters, depending on which we want to specialize in. There's a lot to do here in addition to these like calendar specific events that like reset every two weeks or whatever it is. And I think this is where you're either going to be sold on this game, at least as a concept, or you're just totally not going to buy it whatsoever. For some people, this is going to look awesome. You're looking at this and you're like, holy crap, there is so much content. I can specialize in each of these, become an expert in each of their different abilities, move sets. I can customize their gear and all this. And then other people are going to look at this and be like, dude, it's clearly meant to just try and suck up as much of my time as possible. If I want this individual type of gear, I have to grind this set of missions. Or if I need the polychron, polychron, I have no idea. If I want that and XP, I have to grind this mission set and then I have to move over. And now I need the rare pattern cosmic item. So I have to grind that and it's clearly built from the ground up to try and consume as much of your time as possible, which is standard in live service games. That's kind of the whole point is to keep you playing so that you are still an active player when the next expansion comes out for 20 bucks or 30 bucks or whatever it is. And now that it's free, it's really up to you as to whether this is something that's intriguing or captivating. But at the very least, I think that there's pretty clearly like uh, four dollars worth of content i i think that's pretty clear at this point it's still like not a very good game but at four dollars it's hard not to say just go for it i mean it's four bucks most people spend more than that on like a cup of coffee a day okay so to actually select a mission to play we have to go down here to the little command deck and from there we can select missions and embark so if we hold down x acquiring surveillance network data and then it gives us all of the missions that we have available that we can check out eastern seaboard scandinavian highlands if we go down here wakanda we've got over here snowy tundra recommended 75 to 100 power level and so you can really tweak or select what you like and what you want to play with but you know what instead of just selecting that i kind of want to try quick match and just see how quickly it actually is because I genuinely don't know how many players are in this right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the Hulk as my character because I just want to play with him he's fun and let's select this and see how quickly 
we're able to find other players. I mean, right now there should be a, a, a flood. There should be a lot of players in here right now because it's four bucks on Steam and I think pretty much everywhere. But let's just see how long it takes. I've got something in my front pocket for you. Why don't you reach on in my pocket and see what it is? Then grab onto it just for you. Give it a little squeeze and say, how do you do? There's something in my front pocket. There's something in my front pocket. There's something in my front pocket. Okay. Uh, so we got one person and thankfully we don't have to wait to the end of the mission to select it. We can just get right into it, which is cool. And so we can start with two and then I'm assuming they'll put AI companions for the other two until another player is found or something, <sighs> but there's that. So at least you can play it. You don't have to just sit and wait. Now we're traveling. We both selected Hulk. So is it going to let us both play as Hulk or do we have to select like, is one of us going to have to cave? I don't know. Okay, here we go. We're both going to get to play as the Hulk. Okay. This guy's also Aim level 50. Turbines powering one of their emergency generators. Disable them. Okay. He is much more powerful than me. So he's probably going to be carrying a lot, I would think, but we shall see. Okay. And this is how most missions are structured. It's a lot of just open areas that you fight through waves of enemies in while completing basic objectives again pretty standard for your typical live service game nothing too shocking it's enough for like some mindless fun but i don't think it's going to like really blow you away or in my opinion captivate like hundreds of hours worth of time which was kind of the whole point even though there is a lot of variability even though there are lots of ways to customize your characters and stuff I just don't think there's enough to really justify years worth of obsession over this. But again, for four bucks, it's kind of hard to argue with. Uh, no, no way. That's the whole mission. That was like a grand total of 90 seconds. I'm pretty sure. Was that? Nicely done, Avengers. You wreaked some impressive havoc. I'm I'm genuinely shocked. That was like two rooms over 90 seconds. No freaking way. That okay. That was something else, I'll tell you what. That was ridiculous. But you know what? Maybe that was just a fluke. Let's do like this helicopter one that looks or helicarrier one and see what this is like uh harm training virtual oh no this is all harm training stuff oh well then never mind let's not do that what about uh eastern seaboard let's just go here and I i'm gonna take on a tough mission let's do like this this looks good let's try that maybe this is gonna be longer than like 90 seconds wow i'm shocked that was laughably bad <laughs> i'm not even gonna wait for somebody to join we're just gonna go match with ai companions and keep going maybe the reason that went so quick is because with the overpowered teammate maybe it just broke the mission and so it wasn't balanced. Maybe that's why. So let's just try doing it solo and see if it's more balanced. Let's uh, pop in here. Okay. It's loaded faster. So I think going solo is definitely streamlined. Oh, so here I just got notified I have better gear available and I could go in and customize it all. But look, they have a button dedicated down here to equipping the best gear. You just hold down left trigger and then it auto equips it. Now I can understand that as a game design mechanic. Cause they're like, yeah, players gave us feedback that it's really annoying pulling open the menus, selecting the slightly better thing constantly. So why don't we just give them a button to quickly do it? They still have to pull open the menu, but we can just do this to streamline it a little bit. Oh dude, there's some really good skins in here too. Let's put him in a suit. I love that. That's great. Look how handsome he is. Look at the, the stylish devil you. Wow. Anyway, what I was saying is that I understand why they put the auto equip thing in the UI because I'm sure they got a lot of feedback just saying it was annoying swapping constantly. But this is like streamlining one of the few things that players can do that they might actually find satisfying, which is swapping out gear. Like if you're getting so much gear thrown at you constantly that they had to put a button to just automate the process of selecting gear, 
maybe there's too much. This was also a frustration of mine with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, or as we like to call it here on the channel and over on my streams, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is when they were nominated for like a Grammy or some sort of award and the announcer didn't know how to pronounce Valhalla or got stage fright or something. And so he mispronounced it as Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And I'm never going to let it die because it's hilarious to me. So when I was playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I found myself really frustrated that there were so many skill points constantly thrown at you that you were expected to be like level 280 or 300 by the end of the game. So constantly you were just getting thrown two skill points, five skill points, 10 skill points here and there. And it was so overwhelming for players that they even put in an automated auto assigned skill point button where they would fill in the skill tree for you because it was things like a 0.25732 percentage point damage increase when using hammer weapons or something like that. Like it was so asinine and stupid how little these incremental improvements were that they just automated it. So by the time you were like 50 hours into Valhalla, sorry, Valaha, most people weren't even applying their own skill points, which automated the whole point of an RPG. Imagine if you were playing like Elden Ring or Dark Souls or Lies of P or something, and they just had a button to automatically apply your skill points for you to make the most powerful character. You'd be like, well, then what's the point of a role playing game? What's the point of an action role playing game if you're just going to automate it for me? That's just a linear game. That's just a typical game. It's not an RPG anymore. And for this, is it really a gear based game if they automate the process of equipping gear that's better? Or is it just like an automatically upgrading character that's just growing in power in the background when you're not looking or doing anything because they automate the process? So I, I get why they did this, but I think this is like a band aid fix to the real problem, which is that they're just throwing too much gear at you such that they felt the need to just automatically apply the best gear with this dedicated button down here to just do it for you. Anyway, enough of that. Let's actually try this mission in our delightful suit and see what we're dealing with. This level's a bit more interesting. It's an actual cityscape. I like that. It is going to be tighter corners, so we can't just go exploring the city, but I think that's okay. I can forgive that. It's not really supposed to be. Okay, then we push in here. We're going to punch a turret. Love it. I hear somebody. I don't know where they are. Okay, over there is our objective. Let's go there. Every member of the elite team has to be defeated. These guys might slap us. They look scary. Oh, Lord. Yeah, this might not go well. The team are no longer a threat. There we go. Okay. That was, that was a lot of just random chaos but i'll take it okay already you can see all of the gear that we're getting as we take these guys out like it's just a flood it's a very mobile game way of handling loot where it's just like overwhelming you to try and satisfy like some monkey part of your brain that's just like oh i got more stuff and this stuff is more colorful therefore it is better <laughs> you know it's so stupid i mean for some people maybe this works for some people like if you're a, a dark side fill type maybe the bright colors and the gotcha mechanics make you excited and giddy but i think for most people this is not going to do anything too magical for you you're just gonna be like okay i got a lot more gear like right there do i already yeah i already have more gear that's better than what I already had such that they're giving me the equip best gear option again hold it down and it just automatically updates all of that we've gone from power level like one at the start of this mission to power level 14 before we've even finished it just because they throw so much crap at you constantly <laughs> I mean I could see how maybe if you were playing with friends this could be better or this could be fun I don't know, again, if I would like trade games like like Apex or Fortnite or Warzone or something for this, but I could see some people that are big fans of like superhero games maybe finding this compelling enough to do that. But again, it's it's like a bit of a stretch for me. Uh, it's, it's not my kind of game long term. Okay, so again, this is just like your pretty standard live service. Go find terminals, lock them down so that he can upgrade 
stuff and hack. Like, okay. Just control the zones. Whatever. Yeah, this is just like a hold the objective kind of mission. But instead of other players, like in a lot of multiplayer games, it's AI controlled, which is like just a little weird for me. Because normally these kinds of hold the objective King of the Hill style game modes would be tied to like you know other players teams doing it but this time around it's it's actual ai controlling it which is just different i'll give him credit this is a lot longer than the other mission which was like laughably short but it's still just very samey i already feel like it's super super repetitive and there's just not a lot here it's just waves and waves and waves and waves of enemies None of which offer like a particular challenge. It's just going through the motions of slapping them or shooting them if you're a ranged character. Big pimp slap, boom. There we go. Honestly, like again, the game is not magically changed. This is not a No Man's Sky or Cyberpunk 2077 situation. It's still the same kind of mediocre, lackluster game that it was when it launched, which failed to gain a lot of interest from players. However, again, for four bucks, I think there's probably some fun to be had here. And even just to be able to go back to it in five, 10 years, once you can't get it anymore, I could see that, but this is just personal preference. As they say, like something gotten on a deep sale that you're never gonna use or that you don't need is not actually a good deal. Just because they offer you like a crystal quartz thing that they say was worth $10 million, but now you can buy it for 10 bucks, that's not necessarily a good deal. If you're just gonna buy it, it's gonna sit on a bookshelf. You didn't need it before. You're not gonna need it after. It's not actually a good deal. You're just wasting money on something you don't need. I know I'm saying this while I have a ton of Legos behind me, and so that's quite ironic, but hopefully you get the point. If you're looking at this and you're like, hey, I'm never gonna touch Marvel's Avengers even if I get it for four bucks, just don't get it for four bucks. Not even for like the novelty of having this game that you won't be able to buy after the 30th. Just don't bother with it. But if you think that you could get maybe an hour or two of enjoyment out of it, four bucks is not that crazy, I think. And you'll also own a little piece of gaming history that soon you won't be able to own at all. So let me know if you're gonna pick it up on deep discount before it goes away forever. I'm interested in hearing how many of you guys are gonna be doing that in the comments. So let me know. And as I mentioned, I'm streaming most of the time that these videos go up. So come over to Luke Stevens Live here on YouTube. Just search Luke Stevens Live in the search bar. Come over, say hi. I'd love to have you. But with all that said, thank you for watching. I love you all dearly. And I will see you in the next video. Hugs and kisses. Bye-bye.